watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, you are welcome to today's pastoral moment. Today, the 21st of October, 2023. I am your friend, Pastor Florence Igbe Oduare of Mountain of Glory Church. You are welcome to Pastoral Moments. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Our Most High God, we thank you. We reverence your holy name. We thank you for a beautiful day like this, O oh Lord. We thank you for all that you have been doing. We thank you for bringing us together again. Thank you for my life, for my household, for my audience, for their life. So, Father in heaven, I thank you for their household in the name of Jesus. Father, decrease me and increase in me, O oh Lord. Let your word that will come out today be a blessing, be a protection, be a transformation to me, my household, my audience, their household. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Most High, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Beloved, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It depends on wherever you are watching me from. May God bless you, may God honor you. You are welcome again to Pastoral Moments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to continue what we discussed last week. Last week, we talked about the Ten Commandments. We were able to talk about the first five commandments. Today, we are going to continue on Ten Commandments, Part 2. Ten Commandments, Part 2. It's going to be from the Sixth Commandment to the Tenth Commandment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, we're going to look at the sixth commandment. Ten commandment, part two. We're going to look at the sixth commandment. The sixth commandment says, You shall not murder. It's taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter five. Verse 17. You shall not murder. Beloved, what is the meaning of this? Murder. Thou shall not kill. You shall not take a life. Because life of everybody belongs to God. People's life does not belong to anybody. It belongs to God Almighty. So the Bible is telling us that we should not commit a Mother, praise the Lord. We're going to look at it from uh, some areas of the Bible. We're going to look at it from Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. It says, I, I read, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Praise the Lord. It is self-explanatory. We should not murder. You know that your life is valuable to you. You should also know that other people's lives are valuable to them. We are not the creator of any life. So nobody has right to take any life. All our lives belong to God. So all these commandments came to Moses by God Almighty when the Israelites went astray. When they were serving other gods, when they were not doing the will of God, God Almighty gave them and gave Moses these ten commandments that were given to the Israelites. So you shall not murder is one of the commandments. Praise the Lord. So know it from today that nobody has right to take any life in any form. Whether you like it or not, the life does not belong to you. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at another aspect of it. 
from James chapter 2, verse 11. What does James chapter 2, verse 11 say? For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Praise the Lord. One of the Lord says don't commit adultery. He also said don't murder. Don't murder. Whoever murders is liable to God's judgment. For he that said do not commit adultery said also do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery yet, if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So whoever kill is liable to judgment. You know? So, we saw that killing started from the Bible. When Cain killed his brother, Abel. God did not take it kindly with him. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. You know, so we, are now, we, we now know that we don't have right to kill. We don't have right to kill. Any person that kills is liable to God's judgment. Praise thy Lord. We hear about killing here and there every day. But it's not right. Nobody has the right to take another person's life. So God will help us to keep all his commandments in Jesus' name. Amen. We're also going to look at it in the book of uh, Exodus 23 verse 7. He's still talking about thou shalt not kill. Keep yourself far from a false matter. Do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. Praise the Lord. Our God is a God that does not justify the wicked. So we are still talking about killing here. He said, keep yourself far from a false matter. Do not kill the innocent and righteous. Do not kill the innocent and righteous. A lot of innocent and righteous people are gone. They have been killed. Without any reason. Nobody has right to take any life. So my dear brothers and sisters, learn to keep to the Ten Commandments of the Most High God. Thou shalt not kill. Very important. Make sure. Don't kill anybody for any reason. And you will not be killed too. I will not be killed too. Our household will not be killed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at the book of Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Genesis says, we should not kill. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. Yeah, God made us in our own image and his likeness. So whoever kills, whoever sheds the, the blood of a man, his own blood shall be shed. So, my dear brothers and sisters, learn not to share the blood of anybody. Because we are all made from the image of God Almighty. He made us. He made us. He loves us. Nobody has right to kill anybody. Nobody should, be, should die in the hand of any man. My brothers and sisters, we should learn to make sure our hands are clean. We should not shed blood of any reason. Thou shall not kill. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The other one we're going to look at is uh, the book of uh, Numbers chapter 35 from 16 to 21. Numbers 35, 16 to 21 says, But if he strikes him with an iron implement so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So whoever kills deserves to die. Whichever way you kill somebody, so long as that person is killed, you deserve to die. 17. If he strikes him with a stone in the hand by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So in any form that any person kills, is a murderer. And that person will be put to death. 18 says, if he strikes him with a wooden hand weapon, by which one could die, and he does that, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So, 
eventually in any area that some you kill somebody you know that is why it is good not to be too angry some people in an anger they didn't mean to kill the person because anger was controlling them they will hit the person hard and the person will die and such person is liable to death too so 19 the avenger of blood he said shall be put shall put the murderer to death who is the avenger god almighty if you kill somebody you are you are you are somebody is about to die numbers 35 verse 19 we are still talking about numbers 35 verse 19 it says when he meets him he shall put him to death yes god shall put such a one to death because the person has already a uh, uh, kill thou shall not kill thou shall not murder that's the meaning praise the lord 35 verse 20 says 25 verse 20 says, If he pushes him out of hatred or while lying in a way, hurts something at him so that he dies, 21 says, He has killed the person and he must die. Or in any enmity, uh, uh, he strikes him with his hand so that he dies. The one who struck him shall surely be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. Hallelujah. So eventually, thou shall not kill. That is what the Bible says. So let us try to make sure we are the protectors of our brothers and sisters, of our friends, of our, even our enemy. We should not put anybody to death. Praise the Lord. That's the sixth commandment. We are going to look at the seventh commandment that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That is the sev seventh commandment. We are going to look at the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. It says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That is the seventh commandment. Matthew 5, 27. You, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. It is a law. Once you are married, you are not supposed to be uh, uh, attracted to another man. It's, it's adultery. It's adultery. When you also look at this adultery, you are married to Jesus. No other power should attract you. So when we bring it to, to, to uh, human, when you are a married woman, you don't have right to commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her in his heart. So adultery can be committed physically and spiritually. If a man looks at a woman lustfully, that man had already committed adultery with the woman. So also if a woman looks at another man, I say, oh, I wish this is my husband. I love this man. You have committed adultery with that man. So thou shalt not commit adultery. Praise the Lord. We're also going to look at the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 19. Mark chapter 10, verse 19. He's still talking about committing adultery. You know that the commandment, do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. These are all commandments that God gave to us. But the servant one say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Praise the Lord. We're gonna look at um, we're gonna look at uh, Luke 18, verse 20. Luke chapter 18, verse 20. You know that you know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not stay, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. These are all commandments that God gave to us. So, thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is uh, it's not supposed to be com uh, uh, committed. Because you are married. Be married to your husband alone. You man, be married to your wife alone. Do not commit adultery. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at the book of uh, Romans 13 verse 9. Romans 13 verse 9. For the commands, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. These are all ten commandments. So thou shalt not commit adultery. We're going to look at the book of uh, James 2 verse 11. 
It's still about committing adultery for he who said, do not commit adultery. Do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So if you don't commit adultery, you are keeping the, the, the law, the Ten Commandments, the number uh, seven of the Ten Commandments. Praise the Lord. Let us look at the Eighth Commandment. The Eighth Commandment says, do not steal. Do not steal. Do not steal is the Eighth Commandment. It's taken from the book of Exodus 20, verse 15. Do not steal. Whatever does not belong to you, you take it without the knowledge of that person you have stolen. So thou shalt not steal. We're going to look at it again from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 19. It says, thou shalt not steal. If you take something that does not belong to you, you have stolen. That is what Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 19 says. You shall not steal. Ephesians 4 verse 28. Ephesians 4 28. Thou shall not steal. Whatever does not belong to you should not be taken. Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. So instead of stealing from other people, go and work. Go and work. Let the work of your hand increase so that that thing that you have interest in, you'll be able to afford it instead of going to steal something that does not belong to you. Something that does not belong to you is not yours. If you are taking something that does not belong to you, it should be done with permission. Take it with permission. Do not go and steal. Some people, they, they steal with thinking that it's not known to the person. If you take anything without the permission of that person, you have stolen. Thou shalt not steal. The person may not know, but God that will worship knows everything. You are stealing by trick or by crook. That is stealing. You know? The person may not know, but you are liable to God's judgment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to look at the ninth uh, commandment. It says, You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's the uh, ninth commandment. It's taken from the book of Exodus 20, verse 15. We are, we are going to look at uh, uh, Revelation. We're going to look at the book of Revelation 22, verse 15. But outside are dogs and sorcerers, and sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. That is practicing a lie. Thou shalt not lie against thy neighbor. That is the tenth and the ninth commandment. You know, what, what did not happen? You are framing it up. For that person to look bad. You are bringing that person down. You are bearing false witness. Something that did not happen, you are, you are saying it in order to bring people down. Some people have lied against some people and they have put them in prison. Some people have lied against some people and they, they have caused the cause of their death. You should not lie against anybody. Whatever you know that is not true, do not say it. Do not lie. Do not bear false witness. That's what Exodus 2016 says too. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Exodus 20 verse 16. Don't bear false witness. You know, what, what, what did not happen? Some people will just come out and say, Oh, I saw so-so and so person doing this. 
which is a lie. Just because you want to bring that person down. Just because you want to tarnish, tarnish the image of that person. You are liable to judgment. Whoever does that is liable to judgment. If you are somebody that has been doing that, you have to repent. Repent so that God can have mercy on you. A lot of people have lies. What they did, they witness, they witness, they said they witnesses. A lot of people are in the prison because of lies that people told against them. You know? A lot of people are dead because of that. A lot of people are in shame, they are in disgrace because of the lie people told against them. So if you are dead, that be that, that, that carry false rumor. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent because you are liable to judgment. Repent because when God comes for you, you don't have a hiding place. There are people like that. They want to gain favor from other people by lying. That is not the, that is not the correct thing. When something happens, say it the way it happens. Don't lie. Don't bend it in order to be favored. God is coming for such a one that is lying. So the kingdom of God is against that person. That person is liable to God's judgment. I don't care what happened when you tell the truth. Tell the truth. Say the way it happens. Say, oh, I am sorry. This is what I did. Then the person will forgive you for you to paint it. To lie upon lie upon lie is a case. We all need repentance from it. There is nothing like little lie or small lie. A lie is a lie. Once, once you didn't tell the truth, you have lied. You know, if something happens, say, oh, this is what happened. The worst that can happen is people blame you for it. Don't lie. Don't bend anything in order to look good before other people. God's judgment is upon liars. Liars are liable for God's judgment. Praise the Lord. We are going to look at the Ten Commandments, beloved. The Ten Commandments. We're going to look at it. The Ten Commandments says, You shall not convert, convert thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's property. Anything that belongs to your neighbor, you should not take. A lot of people these days, they take their neighbor's things. You see some men, they know that women are, some women are married. They will still be interested in that woman that is married to another man. You know? That was what happened to David. We're going to look at it from Exodus 20 verse 17. You shall not convert your neighbor's house. You shall not convert your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his horse, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. We're going to take this one, one after the other. Look at my brothers and sisters. Something that does not belong to you. Don't don't turn it to become yours. A woman does not belong to you. Don't take another man's wife. Don't take another man's property. Don't take another man's house. You know, taking of people's houses is very rampant in some areas of the world. You know that that land does not belong to you. You, are, you have taken it. Because you are stronger than that person, God's judgment is upon such a one. God's judgment is coming for the whole world. When you take something that does not belong to you, that belongs to your neighbor, you are liable to God's judgment. It can even be animal. It can be anything. It can be a male servant. It can be a female servant. The fact that it does not belong to you, you have taken it by force. Without the owner's permission, you are liable to judgment. Beloved, those listening to me, we have to change. We have to look at, at ourselves. Every area that we are still nailing Jesus Christ to the cross, 
by not doing the right thing. We have to change. We have to live a better life. The whole world is vanity. Vanity upon vanity. Nothing is worth destroying one's soul for. You know? The end will tell. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. So we should repent of a lot of things we are doing. We should follow this Ten Commandments that is a guard to all of us. When you do the right thing, you are a friend of God. Dear brothers and sisters, let us learn to do the right thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have heard about this Ten Commandments. God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that have yet not given their life to Christ, Please give your life to Christ and live a better life. You've heard preachers talking about it. Give your life to Christ. Say bye bye to sin. So say after me. A sinner's prayer. Oh God, I'm a sinner. Every day I've been committing sin. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me to say bye bye to sin. Help to transform me, O oh Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you say this sinner's prayer with me, Go to a Bible-based church where the undiluted word of God is preached and give your life to Christ. God will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. God will transform us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you because you have spoken again, O Lord. Father, in heaven, help my audience. To follow this, your preaching, O oh Lord. Help them to keep to this Ten Commandments. Transform them, O oh Lord. Let them live a better life. Help them, O oh Lord. Every area that anybody is not living right, transform every one of us and let us live right in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Fire Hallelujah. Amazing Fire TV.